Uh, so during the question period, uh, one journalist said, well, the United States has always been opposed to the breakup of countries in Africa. Keep the original borders. So why now are you supporting this referendum? <laughs> so I said, well, uh, the history is that the Eritrean people ne never had a decision, never had the right to decide for themselves. Uh, the UN placed them in part of Ethiopia as a confederation in 1952. And then in 62, uh, the emperor forced them to become a province rather than as a, an independent state. So that started the war. So I said, I believe they should have a referendum. I asked Melis, well, what, how do you feel about Eritrea <clears throat> becoming independent? He said, the Ethiopian people don't like that. They want Ethiop Eritrea to stay as part of Ethiopia. And I said, well, can you do anything about it? He says, I'm not going to fight them because then they'll go back to the mountains and have another. <laughs> Quite bad again, yeah. So he said, well, we'll have to live with that. But he, I know the Ethiopian people don't like that. In my opinion, the 1998 war was started by Mellis. Because I've read the, you know, you've heard of WikiLeaks. Yes, yes. This yes. was U.S. U.S. Cables, communications yes. that were leaked. Okay. And I, I've been reading those, and it looks to me pretty sure that uh, Mellis wants to explain to me why war. they're not ready. But the, I, I've been trying to get them to mediate their differences. For example, the question of the delineation of the border. I've been saying, well, look, let's, uh, let's all meet in Geneva, <clears throat> two delegations, uh, we could have a U.S. government person there or a, na a neutral government, U.N., and uh, in the morning they will delineate the border. Uh, the Eritreans will go into Badme and take over, and then in the afternoon they'll begin talks about getting back to, uh, to a good and relationship uh, again. Unfortunately, there are U.N. sanctions against Eritrea, which I think are totally unjustified, and the, the the presence of sanctions will make it very hard to have an agreement. In 2011, now. on the request of the United States, uh, UN Security Council imposed sanctions on Eritrea. They were accused of helping Shabab in, in Somalia. I've talked to experts, especially in the academic world. I don't have any inside information anymore. And they say, well, we've seen possibility that they were transferring money to the Shabab. But for the last, uh, last two or three years, there's absolutely no evidence that they're, they're involved with Shabab. Zero. Zero evidence. And in October, in October 2014, 14 of the 15 members of the Security Council voted to lift sanctions. There was only one country that refused, the United States. And they have a veto. So the United States has something so against Eritrea. So my worry Eritrea. is, you know, America, now I'm trying to think uh, like an American, for example. Do you think that America is making a mistake because it looks like it put all of <coughs> its eggs into one basket, which is typically like a minority regime, which is not liked by 90% of its own people, and then ignoring Eritrea because if they bring in Eritrea into the equation, into the formula, they would have more choices in terms of achieving their own strategic interests in the region, but just avoiding not only Eritrea, other neighboring countries, just focusing on one government, which is not stable in terms of having grassroots support from its own people. But unfortunately, the U.S. is preventing Eritrea from normalizing its situation, which I think is very unfortunate.